their intrinsic and they nature. Like, yeah. This food basically drops. Sound. everybody thanks for watching now ever since i've been putting on videos on christianity and the whole hebrew israelite doctrine i get a lot of comments from people who technically haven't watched the entire video so i can understand why people wouldn't want to watch their doctrine or religious belief get ripped apart piece by piece so what a lot of people do is they take to the comment section because they get emotional they don't know how to handle it so they come to the comment section with insults and you know excuses what I don't get in the comment section from these people is actual facts or proof. And the main excuse that I get is I'm long winded, you know, uh, take too much time to get to the point, you know, stuff like that. What you have to understand is there are people out there who have absolutely no clue what we are talking about when we get into this information. They don't have no clue at all. Some people don't really read their Bible like that. Some people don't really get into this whole subject. So what I try to do is break it down. But what I'm going to do in this video is oblige all of these Hebrew Israelites and get straight to the point and destroy this doctrine because, you know, it's time to put the kids to bed. It's time to, you know, grow up and stop believing these fairy tales. Now, straight into it. No stalling. Now, first thing is. Everybody want to talk about this whole tribe of Shem thing. Hebrews always talk about, you know, the Bible being a black man's book coming from King James, who was a black man. Now, let's get straight to the official proof. We're not going to go into what the Bible says. The Bible is not a proven fact. It is not backed up by proven history, which is why it requires your faith. Let's get that out the way. Now, if you was to research, where do we get the Bible from? If you was to trace it all the way back, you were running to something called LXX, the letters of Orestius. What they talk about is how Ptolemy II Philadelphus, he ordered his librarian to basically get the Hebrew law from the Hebrews and translate it into Greek. And it was supposed to add it to their library. This is what LXX is talking about. So there was supposed to be six elders from each of the 12 tribes of Israel who came to Alexandria, Egypt to do a translation of the Hebrew law into Greek. And this is where we get the Septuagint, which is in Greek. This is officially where we get the first proven Torah, the first proven Bible or whatever you want to call it, manuscript or what have you. This is the official story. The thing is, there's absolutely no proof. There's no proof whatsoever of LXX. It's just a letter and no scholar believes in this letter. The thing is, there is no proof of what these Hebrew elders used to do the translation. We don't have physical proof. We don't have any proof of the Hebrew manuscript or the Hebrew Torah or law that would, uh, that would have existed before the Greeks created the Septuagint Greek. So officially, out of nowhere, we get poof the Septuagint Greek given to us by Greeks, by Ptolemy II Philadelphus, who was a white fake Egyptian pharaoh who basically, you know, conquered his way onto the Egyptian throne. This is where your Bible comes from officially. The Bible is not a proven fact. Once again, it's not 100% proven. So we can't go on what it's talking about as far as where the, where the Bible comes from because we don't have any proof. So now, when you go to King James, King James does do a translation. What Hebrews will have you believe is a spirit was put on King James and he magically got the translation perfectly correct from God. Now, of course, there's no way to prove that. So when you look at what they use to create the King James Version, you'll see the Masoretic text. You'll see Texas Rescriptus or Received text. You'll see the Latin Vulgate. None of which could exist without the Septuagint Greek. So the Hebrew Israelites whole claim to fame is King James was a black man and we got our doctrine in slavery from a black man. But this cannot be backed up by facts or proof. If King James was a black man, how come they never admitted he was black? 
All of the earliest paintings of King James show him as a white man, even ones that were supposed to be self-portraits uh, of him painted during his lifetime. So he's a white man in each portrait. The thing is, why, if they won't give you the truth of he's a black man or a white man, why would you expect him to give you the truth in his doctrine? Now, I know what you're going to say next. The prophecy, the prophecy, the Deuteronomy 28. Of course, 100%. Deuteronomy 28 is talking about black slaves in America. There's no way around that. I would never deny that. And it's 100% talking about black slaves. So I know you'll say, well, yeah, well, then we're right there. No. King James Version was written between 1604 and 1611. This is common sense. 1604 and 1611, slavery was already in full swing. So, of course, they could put in the King James Version about the yoke of iron, about what the slaves was going through, because slavery was already going on between that time. The problem is you think that the King James Version says the exact same thing in Deuteronomy 28 as the first or original biblical manuscript, and that's not the case. So people believe that the Moses, when he wrote Deuteronomy, he wrote down a long time ago, which Moses didn't exist, by the way. He wrote down there a long time ago that, yeah, in Deuteronomy 28, all the stuff was going to happen to the slaves if they break the covenant, da, da, da. And it all came true. So you believe it's some kind of prophecy. No. The King James Version was written 1604 to 1611. Now, it's an easy way to resolve this whole thing. We can go look at Codex Sinaiticus, which is the oldest biblical manuscript, oldest complete biblical manuscript and when you go and look at Deuteronomy 2868 there where it's talking about you know going to uh, Egypt on ships and everything and you have the Hebrews looking at this and said see in America is Egypt and it's the land of slavery like Egypt was slavery no it doesn't say that in Codex Sinaiticus it doesn't say this in the oldest biblical manuscripts that we have this is Deuteronomy 28 in Greek this is how it is in English you already know it but when you go to Codex Sinaiticus, it does not say anything about Egypt and ships. It says, definite place, there exists an enemy unto your child, and child run away and not be the inquired E. Now, if you go and try to do a translation on this whole thing, you got to realize that this is an old manuscript. Scribes made mistakes. So if you don't read Greek or know Greek, it's going to be hard for you to put these words together. I read Greek, been reading it for years, so I know what it's saying. You can piece it together yourself and you'll see it's saying exactly what I said. It doesn't say anything about Egypt or ships. Now, the whole thing about the tribe of Shem. We, we're not from Ham. We're not Hamites. We come from the line of Shem. You know, we're not from Africa. We're Israelites. Now, this is what the Bible says about that. And I talked about this in the video. This is what I said. So now we went over before. And I've shown you that when you read 2 Samuel, it's talking about King David going into Jebus or Jerusalem and basically conquering the Jebusites. You know, he's there. He's talking about if he smite the deaf and the lame, I'll make somebody a chief or a captain or something like that. When you read 2 Samuel uh, chapter 5. Now, the whole thing is this is Jerusalem, but it's telling you that Jerusalem was called something different before it was called Jerusalem. It was called Jebus. Now, we know that it was inhabited by the Jebusites who are descendants of Ham. So we're talking about black people. We're talking about these Israelites and King David coming into Jerusalem or into Jebus and killing these black people and taking over their land, right? So according to the Hebrew Israelites, King David and these Israelites are supposed to be us. But Ezekiel 16, it says, Thus say the Lord unto Jerusalem, he didn't say unto Jebus. He didn't say unto the Jebusites. He says, thus says the Lord unto Jerusalem, thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite and thy mother a Hittite. You read Genesis 10 and 15, it tells you the descendants of Ham and the Amorites and the Hittites are the descendants of Ham, black people. So God is saying, Jerusalem, you come from Ham. But Jerusalem's supposed to be of Shem. It's supposed to be where the Israelites come from. So God is saying here that the Israelites come from Ham. But let's go down here. Let's make sure we're talking about the same Israelites, the same people. So when you go read 16.8, it says, Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. 
and I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee and enter into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becometh mine. So now, did God make a covenant with the Jebusites? Did he make a covenant with Ham? Did he make a covenant with Jebus or, you know, any of these people that's coming from the line of Ham? No, we know he making a covenant with the Israelites. So who is God talking to here? He's talking to Jerusalem. He's talking to the Israelites because they are the only people who fit the covenant and what he's talking about. So why is it saying in the beginning? Why is he saying that these people come from the line of Ham, but these Hebrew Israelites are telling you we came from Shem? What's going on here? So now let's bring this whole thing together so you can understand what is taking place and what this book is about. This Bible, especially the Old Testament, is all about the conquest of black people, period. They never mention any of the people of the tribe of Shem. They don't go into what happened to these people. We don't find them in history. We don't find them nowhere. The Bible tells you that they don't build anything. They don't build any cities. They go into lands that was built by the people of the tribe of Ham and conquer it. Just like in real life. What happened in real life? All the lands that we had, they came into and took. You're talking about the people from Japheth and from Shem. But who are they really? Who are they really? We're talking about Arabs. And we're talking about the Romans and the Greeks. We're talking about white people. We're talking about Arabs. That's who Japheth and Shem represents. Period. Don't represent no black people. Black people are of ham, if you want to go and use it biblically. But in real life, it's just justifying what they did to us. That's all it's doing. By saying that, we conquered these black people and took their land, murdered them, stole their history because God said it was okay. So when we go to Deuteronomy 7 and we start reading, it's backing up exactly what I'm saying trying to make it biblical, saying that God said it was okay. So it says, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goeth to possess it and have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. They went in and conquered all these lands. This is a black people was talking about. These are lands of black folks that we had the Greeks and the Romans and the Persians and the Arabs come in and take from us. They took it from us under the guise of religion, under the guise of this made up God, basically saying that it was ordained by God. This is God's will that these people be wiped out and destroyed and we take over their lands because they never show you in the Bible the people of Shem building anything. They don't build anything. They don't have any cities. They come into cities and they conquer. Plain and simple. It's trying to take history and make it biblical and use it to justify what happened to black people. That's all it is. That they were set apart. These are God's special people. So God allowed this to happen. So when you go to Deuteronomy 7, you continue reading, it says, And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them from thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Let's go down here to, um, to 6. It says, For thou art an holy people unto uh, the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So these people are special. One minute, God is saying in, in the Bible that, hey, you people from Jerusalem, you come from these people. He just said that you come from, how are you destroying yourself? Didn't he just say your, your birth and your nativity is of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites? But then it says in Deuteronomy 7 that, hey, y'all go and utterly destroy these people. It's the same people. Y'all destroyed yourself. What's going on here? So it's clearly trying to tell you something here. Which is why I tell you this is a parable. So now when you read in Deuteronomy and it's talking about utterly destroying these people, wiping them out. Show me in history where the Israelites conquered the Hittites. Show me in history where the Israelites conquered any of these people. 
If the Israelites was going around and conquering all these people, they would have been written about. There would have been monuments. There would have been so many people talking about these badass Israelites going around conquering everything. But there's no mention. Herodotus says nothing. Diodorus says nothing. Nobody says anything about these Israelites conquering the way the Bible is describing them because it never happened. The people who was doing all the conquering was the Greeks and the Romans and the Persians and later the Arabs and Muslims. So I've had Hebrew Israelites tell me that uh, Ezekiel 16, God is talking to the ground. He's not talking to the Israelites or, or people for that matter. He's talking to the ground, the land. Now think about that. When you start reading these verses and going through it, it's talking about bracelets and chains on the neck. It's talking about whoredom and fornication. Can the land fornicate? Can the land be a whore? Who else fits this description that God is talking about? So who does this doctrine benefit? It does not benefit us. All I see is people coming to this channel and leaving negative comments, not just to me, but to other people as well. Every Hebrew I have encountered has started out their conversation with a negative derogatory comment or an insult. So the first thing Hebrews say is, well, what do you have? What are we going to use that's going to uplift black people? But then this doctrine is not unifying us. It's not bringing us together. It's separating us because you have people going at each other over this silly book. And all you got to do is read it and do the research. So now who does this doctrine benefit? It does not benefit us. When you look at Africa, Africa is the most resource rich continent on the face of the earth. So you have a doctrine that's anti-Africa, a doctrine that's telling you to forget about Africa. These are not your people. Go to Israel. Israel is your home. When you go to Israel and they don't want us there, you can see all over the news, they kicking black people out of there. They don't want us there. So they want you to abandon Africa. Abandon it and accept Israel. This is not a doctrine for our people. Now, Hebrews want you to believe that we were enslaved and punished because we broke God's covenant. I already went through that and I broke that down as bull crap. So we are supposed to believe and accept that we are the only ones who are punished on this planet. When you can look at every race and see the history of crime and genocide and torture and murder that the Europeans have committed, not just against us, but against so many other races. They have wiped out and made people extinct. But what do they get? They get to rule. They get to be in power and not punished. Now, the one argument I keep hearing is, well, why would the white man write the Bible? And it says in the Bible that the white man is going to be destroyed. Judgment day is going to come. White people are supposed to incur this judgment. It's supposed to be black people slaves. Show me in the Bible where it says definitively that white people are going to be killed in judgment. Where it says definitively, definitively, that means says specifically white people specifically only are going to be enslaved. You can't find it in the Bible. This is all hearsay and speculation. This doctrine is geared at, you know, the whole emotional issue that African Americans have with slavery is geared at separating us. It's geared at causing this ruckus and causing us to forget where we come from. And it's dividing us more than it is bringing us together. As I said, this book is written by the powers that be. The same people are who are in power come from a long line of people who set this whole plan in motion. So what do I mean by powers that be? Romans 13 1 says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Who are the powers that be? The powers that be is our government. The so-called white man and this white supremacist system that has been oppressing us for centuries. This is what your Bible is talking about. It's talking about this government system. And they are trying to say that God ordained them and put them in power to control us. This is what you accept when you accept this Hebrew Israelite doctrine. You are agreeing with slavery. You are saying that slavery was necessary and that we got what we deserve when you follow this doctrine. Think about that. 
Now, this is the other way we can show that they are using the Bible, their biblical scripture to control us. Doesn't this look like and sound like their judicial court system? When you go to Ezra, it says Ezra 711. Now, this is a copy of the letter that the king Artaxerxes gave unto Ezra, the priest, the scribe, even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the Lord and of his statutes to Israel. We know about statutes and codes here in America. And thou Ezra, this is 25, I'm going to, and thou Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God that is in thy hand, set magistrates and judges which may judge all the people that are beyond the river, all such as know the law of thy God, and teach ye them that know them not. 26 says, And whosoever will not do the law thy God, of thy God, and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily upon him, which it be unto death, or to banishment, or to confiscation of goods, or to imprisonment, doesn't this sound like the judicial court system that has been trapping black people for decades? And they want us, these Hebrews want us to follow this system and obey this system that is clearly this white man, this so-called white man system that has been used to oppress us for centuries. And they want us to accept this doctrine and say it's black when we can look in the Bible and see their oppression. They are using this book to control us. This is their law. This has nothing to do with us. This is not black people's stuff. We don't run the court system. This is their court system, and it's clearly in the Bible. This is why you put your hands on that Bible when you go to court. So if it's all about the Bible and obeying the Bible, how come they would disobey what the Bible says and pass laws to allow gay marriage? I have nothing against gay people, but it goes against the Bible. So why would they pass that? But then throw a black man in jail and make us follow these laws that they have in their Bible. This is their book. They created. This is not African. This is not us. This is their weapon against us. And y'all need to wake up and see it. Now, understand just because you find Hebrews in Africa like the Igbo or Igbo doesn't give validity to your doctrine. Of course, you will find African Israelites because when the doctrine first began, the people who would have been indoctrinated first would have been African people. This in no way proves the doctrine. Now, the dagger to your doctrine, which you don't understand, is the fact that these tribes who claim to be Jews, who claim to be Israelites, have been there before the transatlantic slave trade. This destroys your doctrine. It harms it and you don't realize it. The thing is, not all of this Igbo or Ibu people were taken during the transatlantic slave trade. Some remain and are still there to this day. Now, your Bible says that God does not show favoritism. So how come some got taken and put into slavery and some did not? Now, what you got to realize is, it's not about finding them in Africa today. The thing is, you will not find any Hebrew Israelites, period, any proof that predates the 4th century BCE. That's what this is about. Of course, we know there are Africans or there are Hebrew Israelites after the 4th century BCE, but you won't find any before. When you go and look at all of the artifacts that they have been finding in Israel, mostly Every last one of them belong to the ancient Egyptians, or you find Greek artifacts or Roman artifacts. You find more of those than you find of actual Hebrew artifacts. When you go and look at all of these so-called proofs that the Hebrews talk about, like the Stellas, you know, the Tel Dan and the Mishnah and the Marian Patah Stella, none of these Stellas are definitively proven to say what they say. Uh, they, what they claim for them to say. So all of this stuff about is talking about King David and saying Israel and all this stuff. None of it is definitive. It's all suspect. But we can go in Israel, we can look in the museum and you can see that they have found intact so many ancient Egyptian artifacts. How come we find those and not intact any in Hebrew artifacts? Now, we understand that the Bible says that God destroyed Israel a couple times, but we still find ancient Egyptian artifacts that dates during a time where 
the Israelites or Israel was supposed to be ruled by Hebrews. So how can we find intact pieces of Egyptian artifacts and not of Hebrew? Now, for all you Hebrews who keep talking about this DNA stuff, stop it. The Hapla group E1B1A is dated between 25 and 30,000 years ago. Your Bible says in the back of the King James Version, it says that Genesis happened between 4004 and 1635 BCE. Look in the back of your Bible. If you do not, if you do not have a King James Version that predates 1950, don't talk to me about your Bible. Because your Bible has been changed. All of the King James versions are different after 1950. If you find one that predates 1950, like my Bible, as you can see in the back right here where it says that, then don't talk about, well, the Bible don't say that the world is 6,000 years old. It does. Look in the back of your book. It says it clearly. But they took it out and they added stuff after 1950. That's when you start getting all of the versions of the Bible, the NIV and the ESV and all this stuff start coming after 1950. So find the Bible that predates 1950 and you'll be fine. But this DNA stuff is junk and it's bogus and ain't nobody walking around doing a DNA test on all black people all over the world. So stop that with that DNA stuff. But the bottom line is, yes, you're going to find Hebrews in Africa. Now, one minute you're going to claim that, yeah, we got Hebrews in Africa. It's Hebrews in Africa with the Igbo and the Ibu. But then the next minute, you got Hebrews saying that they hate Africa. Africa this. Africa is not our brothers. When these Hebrews claim to be African. So you can't have it both ways. So you got to pick sides. Think about what you're talking about. This stuff has to stop. And then people say this is a, a doctrine to unite our people when they're clearly talking against Africans. We are African people. There's no way around that. I don't understand why people would want to trade Africa for Israel. That's just crazy. Think about what you're saying. But bottom line, all this stuff is suspect. There is no real definitive proof for the Hebrew Israelite doctrine for Hebrew people, period, which is why the doctrine requires faith. It requires your faith and your ignorance and for you to forget your own common sense and accept blind faith. We've been doing that for too damn long. We've been doing it for too long. Except in faith, nothing in return happens. So, of course, this doctrine benefits the white man because we're supposed to just sit back and wait for God to come and punish them. By the time that happened, they've been took over the world and almost all of us been dead and gone. There'd be nothing left but a bunch of light-skinned coons if these Hebrews get their way, if all of us jump on that bandwagon. There is no Bible prophecy. When you look at every single Bible prophecy, you're either going to find natural disasters or things that have been happening long before the Bible was written. Everything else is done by man. Isaiah 17.1, the mass is becoming a heap of ruins. That was fulfilled by men. Obama. People fulfilled that. Not no Holy Spirit or magical thing came down and destroyed Damascus. Israel becoming a nation. Men fulfilled that. No Holy Spirit or God or angel fulfilled that. There is nothing holy or spiritual that happened on this planet that you can attribute to a prophecy that came true that was put forth by an angel or some kind of magical force. It all has been done by man or a natural event or disaster, a blood moon or something that's been happening for ages is not a prophecy. Y'all need to wake up and grow up. So now when you recap this stuff, do we have any proof that a black man had anything to do with the creation of the Bible? No, you only have speculation. No Hebrew or Christian could ever debate the Bible because you have no proof. The Bible is not backed up by proven history, which is why it requires faith. There is no debate, plain and simple. It is easy to trump your arguments and break it all down to you just having blind faith and being an over excited, irrational, emotional, religious person, just like the rest of them. There is no proof. So now when you go and look at it, when you look at the evidence, it's telling us officially we got the Bible from the Greeks. We know the Romans came out and we had the New Testament. We know they put it together. We know Judaism separated. We can look at all this stuff and see it's something suspicious going here. So now this is my quick video. If you want to go more deep into this, I have videos already on YouTube. If you didn't already get a copy of the DVD, make sure you get your copy. And the link is in the description. You can get it there. I have videos on 
all of this stuff. So thanks for watching and I hope that was fast enough. I'll see you guys next video.